This is the PRTG Network Monitor from Pezzler. It's available for free. It comes in a freeware edition which supports up to 10 sensors. I'm actually using the professional edition so I, I need to thank the guys over at Pezzler for allowing me to use this. So what I'm going to show you today is probably the most basic feature of PRTG which is simply adding a sensor to monitor a specific um, part of a server and then show the results in what's known as a map. So by default when you install PRTG it will add a device. It will add itself as the, the first device it, itself being the obviously that the server PRTG is installed on. So I've got it installed on a server running Windows Server 2008. I'm connected through the web interface from another computer on the network um, which makes it really easy to manage. So I, I want to create um, today a sensor to monitor the CPU load or the CPU usage um, just to make sure it doesn't go too high and just keep an eye on it and show the results as a graph in a web page. So what I would need to do is once I get to this kind of home page section of the, the web interface for PRTG, I can simply go to sensors and add sensor. Now it already has the device, probe device that's itself and the server that it's installed on, so I can just select that. So I'm looking for CPU load. So if I just go ahead and find it, there are loads of sensors to choose from. Um, just to give you an idea of how many, um, the, there's a, kind of the the default ones, but you can extend them further, and basically monitor anything you want. So I'm just gonna go back and choose CPU load, and continue to step two. So I'm just gonna leave the settings as default here. You can give it a name, tags, priority. Um, and set some more advanced settings there but the default ones should be fine so as you can see I've got I've already got loads of set, sensors set up and it added the CPU load one at the bottom it will take a couple of minutes to start displaying results from the sensor um, and it takes just a couple of minutes to monitor the CPU load and actually record some data so while we wait I'm going to go ahead and add a map. So simply go to maps and add map. Now a map is just basically it's a web page and you can add different components, different elements showing different data from different sensors. Um, I'm just going to call this map CPU load but obviously you could add more than just one sensor. You don't need to create a different map for each um, thing you're monitoring and I'm going to just allow public access which would allow me to access this from another computer on the network and if I wanted to set it up I could access it from in theory anywhere in the world but by default it would only work around the network the server is on so I'm going to continue to step two so here's the the editor um, just gives you a blank canvas to work on and I can simply add a map item. So if I find CPU load, I just put a tick there, um, and I can show a live graph. Um, I'll just leave the other settings the way they are and add it to the map. So there we go, it's as easy as that. Um, if I then view the map, and um, that's simply what it looks like, that will update every few seconds with new data. Um, regarding the four calls in the server will give me a percentage um, showing the or representing the the load on the CPUs or the usage similar to what you can see in the Windows Task Manager. Um, what I could then go and do with a map like this, if I just give you an example of some of the ones I have, um, warning sensors. It shows me a list of all the sensors which are in the warning state. Right now, you can see there's not much memory available by memory, that's like RAM, random access memory. Um, it's below the warning limit of 20%. You can set warning limits and error limits, and you can even set up notifications. Um, but for now, that, that's all I'm going to show you. A notification, by the way, could be something like an email to alert you of 
a sensor if it goes into an error status. But this gives me real time updates of um, any sensors that are in a warning state. I've also got a map in um, set up to show sensors in the which are down or in an error state, but everything looks fine right now. There's nothing to show there. And I've also set up kind of overview which shows me everything and um uh, got a problem there. And I've shows me some other other graphs. Um but you can set up maps um make them much more advanced than what what I've done here. What you could then go and do with a map is display it on some monitor or another computer. Um I I have this web page open all the time to monitor all of these different sensors, keep an eye on them, um, even though the server is in another room, and it makes it really easy to make sure there's no problems with the server. And if there are any problems, then it's, it's easy to see where the problem lies and get a fix straight away. So that's the, the most basic features of PRTG. Um, as I said, there are loads of sensors you can add. I just used CPU load for an example. Um, then used kind of the default pre-made templates to just put, quickly put a graph into a map. Um, if we go back, there's maybe a, a little bit of data there to see. Not really a lot right now. But over time that would increase and show um, average the the average CPU load and with time it gathers more data and it becomes more advanced as it, as it learns th the average CPU load and different trends that um, different sensors can have. That's PRTG, like I said it comes in a freeware edition which supports 10 sensors so obviously if you set up CPU load that would be one sensor used. Um, you can pay for PRTG if you want to use it on a larger scale um, pay and you can get the professional edition which is what I'm using with 100 sensors um, and it goes all the way up to I believe unlimited sensors so that's what, rather, that's what PRTG is capable of and it doesn't necessarily only need to monitor the, the server it's installed on, it can monitor every other server on your network even servers that aren't actually part of the network that the main server's on um, as long as you have the IP address or a domain or host name you can monitor various, various aspects of another server my email address is jake at jakewright.net my website is jakewright.net where you'll find my blog more tutorials like this more videos like this and of course my live stream and our live IRC chat thanks for watching